Well, good morning, and welcome to church on this wet, very wet Sunday. It's the first Sunday we've been taking it down so far since we've been back. It's nice to gain some, get some shelter and some warmth. The heating is on, so it should get warmer as there. Uh, but let's uh, come to Jesus now, and let's ask him to help us as we meet together this morning. Shall we pray? Lord God, we praise you and we thank you for this new day. Uh, thank you that it's a day that we can come together at church again, uh, that we can uh, worship you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that you would wash us and make us clean, that you'd help us to enjoy this time together, help us to draw close to you in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that you'd pour out your blessing upon us today, that you, uh, that you would feed us from your word, that you'd help us to worship in spirit and truth, despite the fact that we can't sing at the moment. Uh, may our hearts uh, be joyful this morning as we come before you, we ask in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Amen. Great. So, some announcements this morning. A um, bit of a deep breath because there's a, quite a bit going on and some new stuff going on as well. Um, so, that starts with house group uh, this week. Uh, so, we've obviously got house group on Thursday nights. Uh, what time do we eat? Six o'clock, isn't it? Somewhere like half past six here on Thursday night. Um, so if you can make it, that's great. If you can't make it, and you can't normally make it to house group, we're starting a new house group on Friday. So on Fridays from now on, at one o'clock, we're going to have another house group here at the church. Um, so yeah, it'd be awesome. We're going to have two, two house groups a week, Thursday and Friday. Uh, Thursday, normal time at 6.30, Friday at one o'clock. So if, you, if you're normally busy in the evenings, you've got kids to look after and stuff, or you're working, that might be a great uh, a great time for you to uh, be able to get stuck in to the crown of the church. Um, also, uh, things are kind of coming back to life a little bit in the church at the moment, which is exciting. Uh, so we've got the blokes meeting uh, starting back up on Thursday, uh, Tuesday the 13th of this month, and that'll be at 7 o'clock in the back room. So Tuesday the 13th of this uh, month, uh, blokes meeting. Uh, we've only had one since it started before lockdown, so it'd be good to get uh, another one uh, as we've been able to reopen that. Also a new ministry uh, that we're starting as a church. Uh, we had a toddler meeting uh, about a month ago, three weeks ago, and it was decided that toddlers would be a bit hard to start back up right now. So instead we're going to go with something called bumps and babies, because they don't tend to move as much. Bumps and babies, pregnant, pregnant women and their babies. Uh, so, yeah, uh, do be praying for that. That will start a week Friday on the 16th of October at 10 o'clock. And if you're interested in that kind of ministry, if you want to uh, be alongside mums with uh, pregnant mums and or their little babies, uh, then do chat with myself or Barbara, who's heading the group up, and uh, we'll be able to fit you in easily uh, to help out with that group. Uh, so if you feel a kind of you're, you're drawn to that, then do, do chat with us and we'll be able to... Uh, sort you out with that. Yeah. Also, uh, members meeting, uh, for those of you who are members of the church, that's on the 25th of October, so that's that will be the second time we've been able to gather together for a meeting this year, which is again exciting that these things are able to kind of come back online in that way. So that will be on the 25th of October, which is a Sunday, at uh, half past two. Uh, so half past two here on the 25th of October. Great. Well, kids, you can zoom back in now. You can zone in. Because who likes fish? You like fish? Not eating them. Right, I think Toby would agree with you with that. Yeah, he wants, he wants to have pet fish rather than eat fish, Toby. I like fish as well. Do you want to hear a story from Thoughts to Make Your Heart Sing about fish? Yeah? Let's think about fish, shall we? Can you see the fish there? They're massive fish there, aren't they? Great. Well, we're going to think about a fish out of water. Already it doesn't sound too good, does it? A fish out of water. Have you ever seen a fish swimming? Yes. Have you seen fishes on the river? Yes. Yes. Yeah? And Toby's fish? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you've got them in your bedroom, haven't you? Yeah, and have you seen them in the river as well? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes they're a bit hard. They're a bit kind of like camouflage. They're like brown. Like yeah, yeah, like the, like the surface of the river. 
Great. Um, so, a fish in the water, it dives and it glides and it turns and it flashes and darts around uh, through the water. Because a fish was made for the water, wasn't it? That's how it's so amazing in the water. That's why it looks so great and impressive there. That's its natural habitat. What does habitat mean? Where they live. Is that what you're going to say? You just say you said habitat, but it's actually it's actually habitat, not habitat. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. But yeah, it's where the fish live. Yeah, it's where where their house is. Great, where it belongs. And the Bible says that we were made for God, like fish were made for water. We're meant to be loved by Him and to love Him back. That's where we belong. But when we run from God, we run away from everything that makes us alive and free. Do you know what? When we run away from God, we're running away from our own happiness. We leave our place where we belong, and that is close to his heart. Okay, so we thought about the fish in the water. Happy fish swimming around, uh, flashing and darting through the water, full of life and happiness. Okay, well now we're going to think about a foolish fish, right? A foolish fish. Anybody ever seen a fish like that before? Down, down the street, oh, yeah, maybe yeah, in yeah, Eastleigh? Yeah, yeah. I've seen it in that book just there oh, that yeah. you're holding. I've but seen not, it not in Eastleigh, riding past um, you on a bike or a pair of roller blades. No? I've seen it in uh-huh. church, yeah. in that picture there. Okay, right. What if a fish one day uh, said, do you know what, I've had enough of being told what I can and can't do. I'm going to leave this water. I want to be free. I'm going to find my fortune on the land. What if the fish said that? And then it jumped out of the water and onto the riverbank. How far do you think that that fish would get? A couple of centimetres. A couple of centimetres. Also, I don't think it would even get out of the water, the water specifically like that, that, like that because of... Number one, it can't talk, so it can't decide that. Mm-hmm. Um, number three, I think it'll get a couple of centimetres. Yeah. Run out of energy, you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah, totally. It doesn't sound good, doesn't it? It would wiggle and it would flap like you're saying, use that all of its energy on the land, thinking I'm going to make this new life work. Uh, but it, it's futile, which is another word, which means it's just it's a waste of time. Because it's not going to work on the land. It would lie there, eventually gasping for air, and pretty soon it would die. This fish, this foolish fish, that would try and find its home out of the water. So how free do you think that fish is out of the water on the land? How free is he? What do you reckon, Izzy? What do you reckon, Zara? How free is he, that fish? Not free. Not free at all. He's, in fact, he's trapped. He's as soon as he gets out of that water, he's trapped. And he's, sadly, he's, he's going to die. Is your hand still up, Toad, or are just scratching? Yeah. Um, my hand is up. Also, um, I think it could actually get that far. It could be, be caught by a ship and turned into a cab, um, kebab halfway across the country, so it could get that far. Yeah, it could be turned into a fish ring or anything. But it will actually be alive at that point. Oh, yeah. It fills somebody's belly. Yeah. It wouldn't get very far because this fish isn't built for land. And do you know what? Uh, is, yeah, it isn't built for land, it's built for the water. And do you know what? We are also not meant, to, uh, we're not built to be away from Jesus. In the water, a fish. Ah, you found him on your word search. Excellent. That's because he's everywhere. Right, so. A fish is made for the water. He's got his oxygen, he's got his food, friends, family and freedom all in that water. Out of the water, he's only ever going to die, sadly. And in Jesus as well, we find life. We find freedom from sin and happiness with God. Outside of Jesus, there's only going to be unhappiness away from God. And eventually, we're going to die away from him as well, which is not a good thing. And Jesus doesn't want that for us. So shall we pray now? Shall we pray that Jesus would always keep us, that we would always stay close to him, and that we would enjoy this life with him? Shall we pray? 
Lord Jesus, thank you for this story about the sensible fish uh, who lived in the water and had a happy and, and filled life, and the foolish fish who decided to make a life for himself out on the land. Uh, Lord, it's sad to think about what happened to him, that there wasn't anything for him on the land. Uh, there was only going to be death eventually. And Lord, uh, we think about that story and how it reminds us about Jesus as well, how uh, we have life and happiness and freedom, uh, all that we need in him. He's, he's our oxygen. Uh, he keeps us alive. And away from him, uh, Lord, then it's only going to end up uh, away from his heaven and away from him, which is a sad thing. So Lord, we pray that you'd help us to stay with Jesus every single day of our lives and to enjoy him and everything he's got for us. Amen. Great. Who wants to stand up and do a dance again? Yeah? Would you be able to double click on that, Heather? We're going to think about how wonderful Jesus looks. Jesus love is very wonderful. Jesus love is very wonderful. Jesus love is very wonderful. Oh wonderful love. So high I can't get over it. today in the book of Ephesians. Uh, so if you want to uh, open the Bibles or get it up on your phone, uh, Ephesians chapter 1. So yeah, Ephesians chapter 1, and we're going to start reading from verse 1 uh, to verse 14. Uh, if you haven't got your Bibles with you, no worries, uh, just listen in and I'll, I'll read the passage to you. Uh, but before we get stuck in uh, to the Bible this morning, uh, shall we pray? Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that we have this time now uh, to come to the Bible, uh, to see what you have for us as a church in the book of Ephesians. This is really exciting, Lord. It's really exciting to, to hear what we mean to you as your people, and to hear what we're, we're here for, and to think about um, everything that we should we should be 
um, as your people in Bishop's Lane. So Lord, we pray that you would bless us. We've just been singing about how wonderful your love is towards us, Lord. And help us to celebrate that this morning. Help us, Lord, to, uh, to enjoy all that you have for us. We do pray for those that can't be with us this morning. We pray for, for Dave especially, uh, with his bad back. It's uh, sad to hear that uh, that, that, um, that happened again yesterday and that he's, he's in some pain again this morning. Lord, we, we pray that you would uh, restore him uh, again, that you'd um, help the doctor maybe to give him medication, Lord, but just help him to settle at the moment and rest in you today and uh, to, to recover quickly, we pray. We pray for uh, Paul Maletta is there away as well, and for uh, brothers as well, for Angela, for Angie, for, for Julie, uh, for Val, others that can't make it this morning. We pray that you bless them all and uh, encourage them this morning, help them to draw close to you as well, as we're, we're about to do right now. Lord, would you have your hand upon us and bless us and feed us from your word, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great. So Ephesians uh, chapter 1. Let me read to you there. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for, the adoption, for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace which is freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfilment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to put our hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Now I imagine that everyone in this room has a birthday. I'm going to make that presumption this morning. But do you know what? God doesn't. God doesn't have a birthday. And when we think about that, one of the questions that come to our mind is, well, what's, he, what's he been doing for, for all eternity? What's that all about? How did that work? All, all of that time, well, is it time and, um, and what does it mean? What's, what's God been doing like since before the creation of the world? And previously we've thought about the fact that the three persons of God have always enjoyed a loving relationship together for all eternity. Eternity has been filled with, uh, been filled and God's been fulfilled as the Father has loved his Son in the unity of the Spirit. But we learn from Ephesians chapter 1 that the Father, Spirit and Son have always intended to share this relationship of love and unity with another, with the church, you, here, this morning. And that's why God wrote this letter here uh, through the Apostle Paul to the church in Ephesus. Not the movers and shakers, not the lawmakers of Ephesus, but to the church through the Apostle Paul. Paul. Acts chapter 19 tells us that when you entered Ephesus, you were blown away by a massive temple to the Ephesian goddess Artemis. This goddess was worshipped all over the world at that time, and her temple was one of the wonders of <coughs> the ancient world. It was so massive and kind of uh, just filled the skyline. Now this might have uh, this might have been what blew the Ephesians away. But what, what blew God away in Ephesus 
was one seemingly insignificant house in the shadow of that great temple. A house where just a few people gathered together. And it blew him away because they gathered together in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. This church, this bride of Christ, was the true great woman of Ephesus in God's eyes, not, Ar not Artemis. He'd chosen her, the church, before the creation of the world to be a bride with whom Jesus would share his life and his love and his everything. As verse 3 puts it, in Christ the church has every blessing it could possibly need. In fact, we learn from verse 4 and 5 that God didn't only want to pour out his blessing upon us, uh, his blessing upon us in Jesus. He's always wanted to adopt us in Jesus. That just kind of blows our minds. To adopt us, to adopt people in Jesus, that's what God wants to do. God is 100% committed to us, like scarily, mind-blowingly, awesomely committed to us. So much so that he actually wants to adopt us so that we might become part of his family. Jesus doesn't want to just share life with us. He doesn't want to just befriend us and love us. He wants to share his sonship with us so that everything that's true of him becomes true of us as well. He wants us to become holy and blameless sons and daughters of God like him. And remember, all of this was in God's minds before he even created the world. This is how he intended our lives to be. Life as we know it now isn't what God intended. He didn't create this world so that we would fall away from him into sin and, and separation and drag the whole world down with us into that sin and separation from us. That, that wasn't what he wanted as he created this world. That wasn't the good plan that he had for us. However, he also never wanted to force himself upon us because that's not how a loving relationship works. God created us to be free, to either accept or reject his offer of a relationship with us in Christ. As we've considered before, God hasn't created us to be robots. Now, when I was saying goodnight uh, to the kids the other day, I didn't want them to feel left out. So as I was saying goodnight to them and I left the room, I said, goodnight, Alexa, I love you. <laughs> and all Alexa could say to me was, was, all she did was sing this song about love and to say that she was happy to be my AI. Um, what she didn't do is tell me that she loved me back. Because she couldn't tell me that she loved me back because she's just a little tiny robot in a plastic box. But God has created us out of the box. He's created us to be free. Free to respond to his great love for us and to love him back. Now, it wouldn't be love at all if God had just programmed us with affection for himself, would it? And the rest, as we know it, when the world was created, is history. For a while, humanity enjoyed good, a good life with Jesus in the garden. But that came to an abrupt end with a choice. And in Adam and, and Eve, we've all chosen sin and said no thank you to the family of God. And this is where the craziness of verse 7 comes in. Where the depths of God's 100% commitment to his people kicks in. Where his desire to have a bride for his son and to welcome us into the family of God shines through even the greatest darkness of our sin and rebellion. It says in him, that's Christ, we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. As the song says that we often sing, Christ's love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. He created us to be in an eternal relationship with himself. So he says no to our sin. He says no to our separation 
and death, the separation and death that we've brought upon ourselves. But the cost of that, the cost of that upon, upon Jesus, the cost of setting us free from sin and rebellion and bringing us back to himself, was his own life. Now that is absolutely crazy. That the, the eternal Father, Spirit and Son would agree amongst themselves to do this for us. That the God who made this world um, and would, would enter this world and become part of it, becoming a man for our sake and dying. It's just crazy stuff. Christ has made his bond of love towards his bride, the church, as eternal as he is. To the extent that he was willing to become a man and die to win her back. And do you know, that's never, ever going to be undone, that work. His sacrifice upon that cross is eternal. He rose again and, and, and is now a man forever. Jesus is a man forever. God is a man. He's become a man forever in heaven for you. That is just nuts. He made this world. He created us to be in a relationship with him. We stuff that up. And he says, I'm going to come to you. I'm so committed to you that I'm going to become and come into this world and become one of you to die for you, to win you back, so that you might still be with me for forever, eternity with her in heaven. It's just, what? What is that? That's amazing. More than that, even more than that, Revelation 19 shows us that the, his will be the only room <coughs> in heaven that will be stained with blood. The blood of his sacrifice for the church is never going to be washed out of Jesus' robes. He bears the marks and stains of the consequences of our sin forever. And because of that eternal sacrifice, the robes of every other person in heaven will be completely white, completely stainless, blameless, holy. The eternally bloody robes of Christ have washed the church and made her holy and blameless in God's sight for all time and for all eternity afterwards. And do you know what? He cannot wait. He cannot wait for us to be in heaven with him there. He can't wait, as verse 10 puts it, to bring our time in this world to its fulfilment, to bring heaven and earth into a unity at his return. He can't wait for what verse 14 calls it, our redemption. Basically, that's the church's big day with Jesus. When he'll, return, uh, when he'll return and we'll be united with him, the bride will be united, united with him and celebrate and feast and enjoy face-to-face -face relationship with him forever. Now, at the start of this message uh, this morning, we thought about what God's been up to for all eternity, how the Father has always loved his Son in the unity of the Spirit. But you know what? The rest of eternity is going to look a little bit different now. Because for all eternity now, the Father is, yeah, he's still going to love his son in the unity of the Spirit. But the Father is going to love his son and his church in the unity of the Spirit. Awesome. How awesome is that we've been written into eternity under the name of Jesus? Everybody here that is trusting in Jesus belongs there with him. You are sons and daughters of Jesus. He shares his life before the Father with you forever. And that's never going to change. He can't, that, that blood on his robes can never be washed out, never be undone. That sin is forgiven. That place in heaven is for you forever in an amazing way. Until that day, until that big day when Jesus welcomes us into our eternal future with him, he sealed our place in heaven. And he's given us a guarantee that we're going to inherit all that is his. And that guarantee, as we're reading in these verses, is the Holy Spirit. He reassures us. The Spirit reassures, reassures us of our place in heaven. And he helps us to experience it even now. Even now, we can experience heaven in the church. The church is, is an outpost of heaven 
in this fallen world. And that makes church the very best place in the world. It's the place where Jesus gives us a fresh start, where we grow in him and where we change to be more like him, all for our good and for the praise and glory of God, which is the, which is the kind of refrain that keeps on coming back through the verses. It's where we learn to love God, the church, and where we learn to love each other. That's heaven. And where we learn to, to listen to God in his word, and, and where we learn how to speak to God in prayer, that's heaven on earth. It's where together we worship and serve, and, and where we know that we're doing stuff that matters to God in an eternal sense. And together in the church we learn to be better friends, to be better parents, children, and husbands and wives and partners. It's the place where we experience our greatest freedom because it's there that we turn from sin to Christ. Getting stuck in to all the blessings that he has for us in his word so that we can live them out in the week. As we function as a, as a church for Christ, we may be a long way away from where we should be because we're, we're some way away from heaven in this fallen sin a sin sick world. And, it's, and we're a long way from where we want to be in our faith and in our service and our witness for Him. But you know, despite our inadequacies, in Christ we're beautiful. The most important place in the world to God. Like the church at the foot of Artemis' temple there in Ephesus, we may not think that we amount to much in Bishopstoke and beyond, let alone the world. We might be an afterthought, actually, in, in the thoughts of these community, if a thought at all. These things may be true, actually, but in Jesus, we mean everything in the world to God. That church means so much to God, challenges our own perspective of church, doesn't it? But let God's perspective on church also encourage you. Let it encourage you to get stuck in, to treat the church right, to, to, to see it properly, to get stuck in, to enjoy it, to, to take God's word seriously as it speaks into our lives week by week. Let God's uh, perspective on church also encourage you to get stuck in to prayer in the life of the church. It's so exciting that we've got a new opportunity to gather together on Fridays at House Group. If you can't usually make it on a Thursday, as I was saying earlier on, please do all that you can to come on Friday at one o'clock. It'd be great to see you there. And these are all ways that we can treat the church right, that we can see it properly, and we can work in it as God wants us to. Let's pray. Lord God, we praise you and we thank you uh, for this time in Ephesians 1 this morning. It's so good to see just how important the church is to you in Christ. Because we don't always feel that way. Uh, there's a number of people at home at the moment. Dave's uh, poorly in bed. He's, he's, he's in pain. But Lord, help him to know how important he is in your eyes as a part of your church. And Lord, let everybody know here this morning that we may feel all kinds of problems with, with mental health or might have all kinds of struggles in life. But Lord God, we are so precious to you in Jesus. We mean the world to you as your church. And Lord, help us to be filled with that encouragement. Help us to be filled with that challenge as well. So that we might think, well, wow, if the church means that much to God, it, it should mean more to me. I should do my best to, to listen and, and to, to, to act according to God's word and to, to pray with God's people and to serve there and to bless the church. So Lord, this is a challenge to all of us this morning. None of us are what we should be. All of us are inadequate as, as, as sinful people in this world. Lord, we want to be more like Jesus. We want to experience more of it is what it is to have heaven upon earth, to become more like him and to enjoy more and more in our daily lives. So help us all to thrive in this place, to thrive in your, in your word to us, to thrive in our communication back to you in prayer, and Lord, to thrive in our service of one another. Continue to build us up in this place, Lord, and make us shine. People may not think much of us, but Lord, turn that around 
and help them to think that we've got the greatest news, news in the world for them in Jesus. So that they, they might also become part of this, this greatest place on earth, right here in Bishopston. We pray all these things for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm. Right, well, we're going to be true to our shorter service time right now. We're going to close out, get the kids back in. Uh, Barbara's probably prepared a little bit more than that today, but um, maybe we'll let her finish for now. But may the Lord bless you, may he keep you, and make his face shine upon you. May he give you grace and peace as you seek to live, uh, to bring him glory in Christ this week. Amen. Pack up, I might as well put that song on actually. Is everybody in my hair around? Where is it? It's not in there. It might be on your chair.